Let's talk about sampling methods. A simple random sample is when you, for instance, take all the members of the class and put them in a hat and draw out some names. So let's put things like names in a hat. We could also number people and roll a die to choose them. So rolling a die is a nice, simple, random sample method. And then the third way we typically do it is with some sort of number generator. You can find them on the computer. Your calculator has one. Those are ways that we just gather a simple, random sample. Normally you just number people off or number off the classes or number off the groups. Put them in a hat or roll a die or use a number generator to select some. So it's very simple. <clears throat> Hence the name. So systematic random sampling is when you choose randomly the first person. So our example over here on the right says each member of the freshman class is assigned a number. Starting with the 12th person, which you'd have to choose that randomly, like maybe you rolled a die and you got 12. So you chose the 12th person to start with. Then maybe you rolled the die again and you chose a 10 or from, or you rolled a 10, excuse me, not chose. You roll a die and pick 12 for the first person. Roll it again and you have 10. So you choose every 10th student is selected. So say that they are entering the auditorium and the entire freshman class is coming in. Then you know to pick the 12th person and then every 10th person after that person. And you would have gathered up a systematic random sampling. It is important that both of those numbers are chosen randomly. <clears throat> a stratified random sample is when you break up your population into subgroups according to some characteristic and you select members from each subgroup. So the example given is that the freshman class is divided into two groups. So we have males and we have females. Our two groups that have a characteristic obviously and we randomly select 50 males and 50 females. So 50 males are chosen from that group and 50 females are chosen from that group. That would be stratified. And then the last one we look at <clears throat> in Math 3, there are more than these. If you were to move on to AP Stats, you would see them down the road. But for cluster sampling, to get a sample of all high schools in North Carolina, a researcher chooses randomly chooses 20 districts from the state and then looks at each high school in those districts. So it's like having all these districts. I'm not necessarily going to draw all 20 of them, but let's just imagine there are a bunch of school districts and they randomly select 20 of them, but then they sample all the high schools in that entire district from the ones they've sampled. So that's different than stratified because stratified took samples from each of the subgroups. Cluster sampling takes entire like subgroups and samples everything in that subgroup. So they sound alike, but they're really different. All right, let's look at some examples. In research, the researcher ultimately wants to answer a question about, so we're always looking for questions about a population. When every subgroup of the population of a certain size has an equal chance of being chosen, the sample is said to be, and that should just be a simple random sample. When researching the opinions of teachers in a large school district, the researcher randomly chooses five schools in the district and interviews each teacher in those five schools. So that would be like this cluster example that we just looked at a minute ago. So they chose... Out of all the districts that you have, which is a lot in a state, they chose five districts and sampled all of the teachers in, or excuse me, they chose five schools, but then they selected every teacher to sample in that, those five schools. So that looks like a cluster sample. The best, <clears throat> the best sample is one that is representative of the population. You never want convenient. Convenient is like you gathered up all your best friends and you asked them some questions. Biased, we'll talk about soon, but that's definitely not what we want. And then systematic just depends on what you're dealing with, if that would be appropriate. But we always want it to be representative of the population. Number five says the process of selecting a sample from a population is called 
sampling. A census is if you gather everyone in the population. Population is not at all about selecting something. And then systematic is a method we use, <clears throat> but sampling is what we say we're doing when we are selecting a sample. In blank, the population is divided into homogeneous groups according to some characteristic called strata. So that is stratified sampling, like it sounds. In blank, the population is divided into overlapping areas or clusters, or excuse me, non-overlapping areas. So that would be cluster sampling, like it sounds. Some of these are kind of obvious. In blank, the sample is chosen from the population in uniform intervals in terms of time, order, or space. That would be systematic because it's like every five minutes or every 12th person, things like that. That is systematic. In blank, certain subclasses like age, gender, income group, and education level are used as strata. So that would be stratified. Number 10 says a student wants to determine the most liked teacher at her school. Which type of study would be most practical to obtain this information? So that would be a survey. We'll talk about the other things listed there in the next video, I believe. Number 11 says a teacher wants to survey students, 20 students of her 100 students this semester. Which procedure would be a systematic random sample? A says obtain a list of all students, start with a third student, and select every fifth student. B says select the first 20 students on a list of all of her students. So that's definitely not right. C says start with the second student who walks in her classroom and then choose every other student who walks in until 20 students have been selected. <clears throat> and then D says select 20 names out of a hat with all of her students' names. So if she wants systematic, that would not be it because that is just a simple random sample, SRS. But the difference between A and C is that she first obtained a list of all her students so that is at least a good starting point. And she didn't just start with the second student. So I would choose A based on the fact that they've told you she at least obtained the list of all of her students first. So I would hope that when she starts with the third and selects every fifth that they were randomly chosen. But this would certainly be a better answer if they had said that. All right. So that is it for this video. 